Councilor Reimer is next. Thanks, Mayor Robertson. Um, well, this has been a very challenging decision, I think, for, for all of us, um, but I can only speak to my own my own experience. I'm noting, of course, that I spent part of it in the hospital, so it, it will always stick in my mind as, uh, as a memorable experience. Um, it did give me an opportunity, however, to read, um, read a lot. I think I read this plan um, so many times I can actually quote parts of it chapter and verse. Um, unlike previous plans, um, I've had to sit through public hearings where people debate what seniors meant in the context of a plan, what mid-rise meant, um, and I wasn't there for those plans, so I don't really know other than what was left on paper. Um, but this one, I was here in November 2010 when this plan was passed. I remember the speakers, and just to make sure I didn't forget anything, I went back and rewatched the tape several times, actually, to make sure that I, I was remembering the plan properly. Because I think in a situation like this, we have a broad spectrum of opinions about um, what to do moving forward. Um, the plan, well, the plan should always provide guidance, but most especially in this case. I, uh, in my opinion, um, both from watching, the, from my memory of it, from re-watching the tapes of the plan and from reading the plan, the, the focal point of it is that future development will need, and I quote from page 23, to demonstrate how to reach an optimal balance of public benefits, site improvements, and urban design objectives with higher densities and low, medium, and on selected sites, high-rise forms of development. So the issue before me is whether or not this is the optimal balance that can be reached. In my opinion, it is. It has been a process that has been going on since 2008, interrupted somewhat by the plan, uh, more intensively over the last, I guess, a year and a half now. Uh, and well, there's many things I would love for this site, I guess, if I owned it and had all the money in the world. Um, I don't own it, and I don't have all the money in the world, and my job here is to try and honor the plan. Regardless of what you think of the concept of public benefits being generated by higher densities, there's no question that this plan absolutely anticipated that this site would do that. So the question before me is whether it has generated enough, and whether or not the issues around urban design are achieving that optimal balance. I would say on the issues of benefits, I have learned a lot during the course of the 150 some odd speakers about the politics of putting things on site versus off site. I think it would have been easier for people to, to see that benefit if it were on site, but I don't believe as a decision maker that I could pander to that, knowing that we could get so much more to the community off site. So, so I stand by that decision, but I think the concept of who decides is quite paramount, and I'm pleased to see. Um, Council will be adding the amendments around bringing it back to council, and particularly with consultation from the community days on group before it comes back to council. I would say also that the issues around Watson Street and the bikeway were quite paramount in my mind. They obviously they play heavily in the plan. I mean, given the constraints of the site, very difficult to treat well, but I know in the, uh, in the amended recommendations that Council Louis put forward. There's further attempts to make this better. And, and the last thing I'll say, which I, I sort of hesitate on because I, I have no formal training in this, um, but certainly the speakers who I, I respect a great deal, but there's a lot of time that went into the submissions on, on this, not just at public hearing, but over the course of the last four years, either through developing the plan or through specific inputs of public hearings. Uh, my layperson's opinion is that the building is ugly. It's ugly. I look at it. Having said that, um, I have looked at other ways that one could treat the, the existing zoning density if it was done under existing zoning. I look at um, this, I, I look at all sorts of things, and I think my layperson's head says ugly, but if you could turn the large monolithic horizontal element, as Councilor Louis dubs it, uh, into something that strengthens walkability and creates more diversity in the pedestrian realm, um, that that would need, alleviate a lot of my concerns with it. So in the design and development permit phase that should pass here today, um, I very much hope that these comments are well heard by staff and by the, the members who advise on development and design. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor Reimer.